Hey guys, it's Dr. Matt from Live Spring Chiropractic in Austin, Texas. We're here today again with Natasha. She may look familiar. Uh, she, we saw her before previously for some shoulder tightness and shoulder tension, but something new came up and I figured it would be worth showing. So what'd you do? What happened? <laughs> I was stretching and I heard this pop and crack in my like hamstring area and my like the pull, like the tension just went loose and I fell over and I was like, what's this? So this just happened today, yes? Yeah, and then I called him and I was like, hey, I think I broke my leg. <laughs> so let's have you point to even where you felt it. So it was while like doing right yoga here. and right on the back of the hamstring, but you felt a pop. Yeah. yeah. So what I told her previously was that when we hear a pop, it's usually not actually a muscle, it's coming from the joint somewhere. So that muscle, the hamstring attaches up at the hip bone and down at the knee. So I'm thinking it was one of those two things, but we're gonna do an assessment so we can figure out what's going on with that, where it's coming from. Um, but we're gonna start actually with just some light motion first, because I wanna see how you're moving now after that. Uh, just reach forward first. So pain with that on the A hamstring. A little bit, but not okay. much. Okay, and then how about just leaning backwards? So we're looking. Yeah, like right here, but it's not, it's like really deep in there, you know? Okay. Um, so right here, for your nerds out there, what we're doing is we're moving through the pelvis. See how the pelvis moves. Uh, when she leaned forward is actually where we see most of that uh, abnormal movement come in. But let's see a side bend to each side now. So sliding your hand down your leg, good, and then to the other side. Does that agitate it to either no. side there? Okay. Good. Um, let's have you lie on your back, please. So face up. So before we look at her spine, we're doing things different today because of what she's specifically done to the leg. And I just want to feel that normal motion first of that mm -hmm. knee, and then also some of the motion of the hip as well, internal and external rotation of that femur, we call it. I'm thinking just from, I kind of seen her move a little bit. To me, it's looking like it's coming from more of this. And I'm actually going to palpate here, the trochanter. Yeah. Yeah. And tendered it right that. there. Yeah, me too. So, and more so right in the middle, right there. Mm -hmm. So more than on the front yeah. and more than on the back end of that, mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. So I'm palpating the greater trochanter for anyone that's nerdy out there watching this. So now we're going to. Yes. So internal and external, and that even more so, yeah. is not moving. So feeling for internal and external rotation of the hip, that's where it really gets stuck, or that's where yeah. it really doesn't want to move. So just from that, in my mind, I'm definitely thinking more so. It's coming from that hip, and then we're going to feel that front to back glide of the knee. That feels fine, and then that side to side too. So anytime we hear something, if it is a pop, I'm just checking worst case scenario, structure of her knee for that structural integrity, making sure you didn't pop any kind of oh. ligament or have any kind of tear in the knee. You have not. Yeah. yeah, and this should not feel painful at all to mm -hmm. you. Definitely from feeling motion and just mm -hmm. from doing a couple slight things, it is that hip, so that pop, even though you didn't feel like it was coming from your hip, yeah. It was. So let's have you go face down, please. So turn over and we're gonna do some analysis more with the pelvis on the SI joint. So the sacroiliac mm -hmm. joint. So looking at the leg length, we're way off there, Natasha. It's you're really bad. You're right on the leg. It's <laughs> significantly shorter than the left with was the way it is. the other way around? Yeah. What's happening? So probably just something that she did to her pelvis when she was doing yoga. And yeah, that, uh, that. Me, yeah, immediately, me too. Yeah. And on that, so more on the right oh. side, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that right one was the one that was way short. And even though on the front end it was the left hip, you feel how sore it is back yeah. here on the right. So the problem is not always even where we perceive we feel something, it can be something connected or something close. And then I wanna muscle test the hamstrings also. Okay. The hamstrings neurologically are controlled through here, the lower lumbar. So mm -hmm. from talking to our nerds out there watching the video. So let's test again the good, the one that you didn't feel okay. anything to, so that. And I want you to kick toward your head like that, okay? Go ahead. Okay, and I'm giving good resistance there. And you've got good strength, Natasha, you feel how that? Yeah. Feels good, now one more time with this, push toward your head. 
and not not as good. It's yeah. not horrible though. That's not even that really that worst one. We're gonna do a couple more because I'm thinking more so just that pelvis is where we really need to address. So I would expect with feeling her pelvis and seeing the leg length here that her glute muscles are really disengaged more than anything. Mm -hmm. So let's have you hold this out here. I'm gonna push in, don't let me, and nothing there. So exactly what we're feeling is. Can you feel Natasha, did that feel weak to you? Yes, super weak. Okay, and we'll check the other side for reference. Hold there, so much better. I can't move it. Now let's check the other glute, the glute max, the big mover here. I'm gonna push the leg down, don't let me. Okay, not horrible. Let's check this one. Same thing, hold here, don't let me push it down. I said don't. I, don't. Uh, I know. <laughs> Feel it's, it's harder, right? Yeah. So we're gonna make an adjustment to that right hip first there. So okay. let's have you on your side with that right side up. And then I'm gonna bend the top leg. There you go. You know the drill. And I'm gonna roll her whole body toward me, soften there, soften, good. And then let's have you go face down one more time. I'm gonna retest a couple things and we're gonna see if that feels different to you also. So first thing that we looked at, and even how she laid on the table was different, it's straighter, which is good. And then the leg length there, we're back to even. That was a huge change. Yeah, and that's not yeah. poking out so much and that probably feels different. Mm -hmm. How does it feel compared to where it did? Less tender and there's no pain. Good, that's what we want. So then as we retest these muscles here with the nerves from the pelvis control, we should see better activation. So on that right side was where we're finding the weak ones. So hold here, Natasha. I'm going to push in. Don't let me. Hold. Okay, there. One more time. Hold. There. Good. And that's what we want. Kind of bring this up. I'm going to push down. Don't let me. Good. And then let's check the hamstring on this opposite side even. So kick toward your head. Hey, hey, I like it. Better. So seeing those muscles turn back on, that's good. So before we even do anything else there, I want to have you stand. And I want you to just, we're going to run through that motion again and see if that feels different even. So now, again, just reaching forward. Yeah. I feel like pain here though. So on the hamstring still is. Yeah, it's... but that's probably a muscle, right? Yeah, so okay. muscle attaches to bone and we went to that uh, origin, origin of where the hamstring starts. So we're still going to uh, evaluate, but one more time with the extension also. So it back, so you move better yeah. through both Mobility, of those. Mobility, yeah, yes. range. So that's first thing, but now I'm, I am gonna actually feel that muscle where you're feeling it. So okay. let's have you lie face down for me one more time. So I'm gonna palpate that muscle from origin to insertion, and really that center point is where I'm gonna start, where she's feeling it. Um, and where, so point one more time to where like you're- right here, cause, or okay. like here, like kind of on this side of the muscle, you know what I mean? Okay. So there's a couple divisions of that muscle, and I'm feeling right in that, mm -hmm centerpiece of where she's pointing to so I can see yeah and I feel mm -hmm. some ropiness right through there I want to feel that other one for reference nothing there and that yeah right there and as we trace that yeah. that's actually worse as I got that's up. exactly like yeah that. right right there so that right there mm -hmm. yeah so this is a classic, what we call like a, just a sprain strain injury. So something where a sprain refers to more of the passive, so the joint being injured. And Natasha, what that means is that actually that hip bone mm -hmm. itself where we were, yes. that, that we readjusted. But then the, uh, the strain refers to the muscle. So you actually, that hamstring muscle, oh. you did strain. And right there, as we move mm -hmm. up to where it inserts, that inserts right on their sit bones. They're gonna be right up where it inserts. And it's worse as I move up. I don't know if you feel that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably the most tender point of all. Yeah. Right there, I'm gonna put pressure on it and I'm gonna to move toward that insertion as I shorten the muscle and then I'm just gonna lengthen it out like that. And then as we have her move again through this after, should feel better. There we go. Okay, good, let's have you stand for me one more time and we're gonna do that same motion that we went through. 
as we have you toward. Oh, it feels like so much looser. <laughs> Good, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now that's where addressing both bone and muscle comes into play. Now we've done that. We're gonna adjust the rest of your spine now. Okay. So let's uh, have you go face down for me one more time, please. So feeling for motion of her spine. We've been working together for a while now, so knowing where her spots are that we've been working on, but still every time things are adapting and changing, so it's different. Right there between your shoulder blades. Mm -hmm. Big breath in for me, please. Let it all go. A little push there. <laughs> there, good. You all nodded up that was too. Yeah. I didn't want to move with just a little bit of pressure, so the more that second time. And good, just breathe through here. I want you to expand your ribs as you breathe, and we're just gonna let that area move. Good, and it should feel easier to move. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what we want. And then we're gonna feel. And this is usually the hot spot for you, mm -hmm. is right around that neck area there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and right yeah, there. I feel that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with this, we're gonna do it a little different this time. Let's have you turn over on your back. Okay. So with the left hand, I'll have you grab the back of your neck on the same side. Good, now I'm actually gonna be on that side. And then with this hand, we'll keep it right here. I'm gonna put my hand right over yours. Okay. And we're gonna be on upper ribs here. Big breath in for me, please. Good, let it all go. <laughs> yeah, it is stuck, so we're feeling those ribs glide. We're gonna have you do this one here, and then... <laughs> all the hair, okay, I'm gonna put my hands right over yours. Okay. And then there, squeeze your elbows together, and I lean you back, look up for me. There we go. <laughs> good. <laughs> so good, that's the movement we wanted. And with that, for people watching out there, I'm actually vectoring that here with my sternum right along her spine to get that right angle. So it's not just looking for a noise, but really wanting that specific spot to move. Uh, so let's have you go face down one more time. I mean, to feel the upper back. Yeah, so much better there. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna use this. It's just a instrument that we're using to adjust her neck. With some people, I always like a cracking or a popping or a twisting. What was your experience? You were one that you prefer something else? I like it, but I also was like, I don't know. It's kind of this. I like this though. She likes this. So uh, with the first thing I'm going to do is palpate the muscles along the sides of the neck. And let's have you look down for me, please. And that helps them stand out more. And on the right side, mm -hmm. all the way up the neck, that muscle's really ropey. And I'm going to move here this way and we'll show the camera right up close on the neck here. And what I'm feeling for along the neck is just these muscles along the side and right here on the right side. You feel that, Natasha? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel to you when I'm... <laughs> it feels like, like almost, I don't know, like a bruise. Like it's hurt, it's like tension and like a sore muscle. There's know? a lot of tension there, yeah. So with you, it's been a couple different things that we've been working on in the neck, but the main one has been that top bone. Mm -hmm. It's called the atlas and that right side there yeah. where my hand is. So at the top, and this bone I'm about to make an adjustment to, so many times is a source of jaw problems, jaw tension. Oh yeah, I have a clicking jaw. Does that have to do something? There we go. <laughs> like my mom told me to ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing I mentioned it. Yes. And you can tell your mom that you had asked me now too. Okay, so perfect. we'll look at the jaw too here afterward. Let's actually see the jaw open first and then close it. I can feel it click too. So it's her, your problem is your jaw is too mobile actually oh. on that right side. So it means more homework. Okay. We got exercises <laughs> to do to create stability. If it's too mobile, if you've seen our other videos, we don't adjust it. We stabilize it through exercise. If it's stuck and not moving, then we'll move it. But a lot of this for you is the neck. When okay. we stabilize your neck, yeah. your jaw tension is gonna minimize or go away. And there on the right side. So this is really specific on this bone. We you know how it's moved, and I gotta get that angle right. Here we go. And what, what does that feel like for the people watching? Feels like that? a spring, just like a spring on you. It's hitting you, right? Yeah. And describe the difference for me now. I'm laughing over here a little bit because I can feel the difference. Yeah. Like, Let's let you talk. No, there's literally like a rubber band that is not 
doesn't have tension anymore. The tension's gone, yes, Feels completely. Good. So let's have you look down one more time and I'm just gonna refill the muscles. And as I move my hand back and forth, there's no tight muscles at all mm -hmm. in the neck. So again, a muscle pulls tight for a couple of reasons to try to splint or guard a joint that has a problem with it, which is going on there. And also to help try to pull the bone back into the right position. So when we do that, when we correct one of these joints, the muscles calm down. So, but sometimes, like we saw, we gotta do a little muscle work, like on the hamstrings, so mm -hmm. stop hurting yourself. 